That snails down the chalkboard for Richard and John Zappia too because they can feel this championship starting to slip into Kelvin Lyle's hands. Now, the team from Matt Abel, they need to tell him that Zap's got a problem. They need him to be aware of the situation. As long as he doesn't red light, touch the center line, this is his win. Surely Zap stays there, and he does. What do you got, Matt? What do you got? Yeah, he just gets stronger as the night goes on. Oh, he also hasn't got shoots, though. That's what he's not oh, got. No. This is going to go real, real deep, Wade. I don't think that's stopping. Oh, oh, over and over in the deep end. Matt Abel, that's big. Oh, man. Just when he catches a break. See, those front brakes are glowing, so he was on the brakes as hard as he could get. Well, that was dramatic. One car not going, one car not stopping. He's oh, out. oh, that's the good news. You're just thinking, hey, he's finally got a good run. Lucky ran good numbers in Sydney in his final run as well. You think, hey, oh, man. Now, let's hope that a lot of that is just body work, right? Yeah. But the chassis itself has stood up to that. It got sideways in the sand. He was doing everything he could to pull it up. You can see those big tennis nets down there. That's to literally catch the race car if it goes any further than where Matt Abel's car has went. And uh, it does look really dramatic because it looks like it's in a million pieces. But as Wade was saying, that'll likely just be the body panels. He'd probably be more concerned about the motor. I think he's got quite a bit of sand in his mouth. No trans brake. Mm. There you go. No trans brake for Zap. No brakes for Matt Abel. Yeah, <laughs> right grin on his face for Matt Abel. I think he knows that. He'd make a great Northern Territory reality show star, <laughs> Matt Abel. He's got that real laid-back territory style. This looks solid. Did we get numbers on it? I didn't even look up at the yeah. screen at that time. 594 at 391 kilometres per hour. So he's boogieing. Man, he was trying to stop this thing from 400 clicks, and it wouldn't, would not pull up. It starts to bounce in the rear, all the braking in the rear as well. We go to the front brake discs at the front to try and do whatever they can. And once they go sideways, they go over. Once, twice... Thankfully landed back on its wheels, peeling yourself out of an upside-down race car. Not a lot of fun. My esteemed colleague, Chad Naylor, normally calls that chirp, 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 chirp. Yeah. Under the heavy braking area. Once it starts making that little bounce in the rears. Oh, man. If it wasn't for bad luck, Matt Abel would have no luck at all. So they kind of got out, but they just didn't flourish. I don't know if they got caught up. Sometimes there's like a low-pressure system that can build around underneath the rear wing and on top of the wheelie bars and the... the Shoots just don't pop out all the way. They get caught up. Oh, that's where he's got sideways. Wow. And then over it goes. Boy. Good news is that Matt's okay. He's a hardy competitor. Take a lot more than that to knock him over. You this is all precautionary that. as well. Yeah. When you have a big incident, even if a driver says they're okay, there's a, a bunch of checks that the paramedics oh. will need to do. And uh, that is a sad, sad sight. Even if you're not a, a Chevy born and bred person seeing any 57 Chev with sand pouring out of the motor is not cool.